Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the session, everyone. And welcome back after Eid vacation. I hope everyone enjoyed their Eid holidays. Uh, in start of semester three, uh, we have discussed that we're going to launch uh, as a Deanship of E-Learning. Uh, there are a series of lectures related to Blackboard Ultra. Uh, right now, uh, we are using Blackboard Original that is called Blackboard Learn. But uh, I hope that is in implementation phase and from next semester, we do have upgraded, upgraded version of Blackboard that is Blackboard Ultra. Uh, in last session, uh, we took a complete visit of interface for Blackboard Ultra and we explored all of their functions, uh, I mean like overview of all the functions. Now the time to take a start to uh, uh, in the deep breath, I mean like with the, all the tools which we have inside Blackboard Ultra. As you know, and uh, as a faculty, you're using Blackboard uh, Learn for the last three years, and you know that uh, it is packed with the powerful tool, and it is really helpful, especially during the pandemic. And uh, the new version, upgraded version, is uh, uh, more stable and with equipped with more powerful functions. One of the function is safe assign. Uh, being an educationist or a teacher or a faculty or as a student, research is an important part for all kind of education sector. So while you're doing some kind of research or you are um, like uh, giving some kind of assignments, you are, as a teacher, you're expecting uh, to bring back the results as, as an original result from the students. Uh, so at that time, you do need some kind of uh, like uh, powerful tools which can tell you that the student uh, be, uh, be a student is sending the work that belongs to him or her or that doesn't belong to him or her the reason behind nowadays thanks to the internet people have many opportunities to study anytime and anywhere with easier access to an abundance of information without leaving their homes however while this has been a, a huge benefit to the e-learning industry. Um, it also made it easier for learners to copy content they find online. As a students of all ages are expected to write a variety of academic papers and their teachers are also expecting those papers to be unique and free of plagiarism. The reality is many students don't want to use a plagiarism checker uh, because they believe uh, that their research is original and don't need to prove anything. However, having plagiarism work can easily get them in serious trouble. So avoiding that trouble of uh, being a teacher or as a student, we do have some kind of options. And uh, before taking a start uh, to learning about the safe assign first, we need to know about what is plagiarism. Because uh, understanding, developing understanding with the plagiarism can bring the good results as a teacher and as a student as well. Plagiarism is presenting work or ideas uh, from another source uh, as you own with or without consent of the original author by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. So, in simple words, you can say you're going to bring some kind of work, uh, you're copying data from the internet or you're downloading some, some assignments from outside source and you just copy and paste in your assignments or in your research and uh, there is no reference being given over there. You didn't put the quotation over there. So it means you are going to be uh, caught as a plagiarism. So what kind of plagiarism can be, uh, I mean like, uh, so we need to understand first the types of plagiarism, then we are able to I mean, like, uh, try to avoid all these kind of things. One thing I want to mention it over here that uh, try to be uh, intact with me till end of the sessions. The reason behind this session is a might possible, not pretty long. Uh, the reason behind this session is more practical instead of the theory uh, based thing. So we do have demo, demo videos for you and uh, real environment where we uh, will have to like uh, 
uh, give you an example that how you can use all these type of software, especially safe assign, how you can use it inside Blackboard. So keep in touch with me till end of the session so you would have an idea that how you can use this powerful tool in your assignments and especially for the research. And another important uh, part for the faculty, because nowadays research is really important for the faculty, and especially now it's mandatory inside uh, Jazan University as well. So once you're doing research, you need to know about the plagiarism and how you can detect the plagiarism and what kind of and what types of uh, software is available, which can help you to bring back your original and unique uh, information and uh, uh, one kind of techniques and tips can be used. All these things being, are gonna be discussed in this presentation. So this presentation is actually, I believe one of the best presentation, uh, especially for the researcher. So if you are doing any kind of research, uh, this is for you. So uh, be intact and be uh, I mean, like present with me, not only get logged in and just leave the session, if I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you any kind of information or uh, question, you have to answer me. So in this way, uh, I can share more knowledge with you and uh, by asking the questions uh, and by getting the reply from your side, it means you are I mean, like uh, committing and uh, you are present inside the uh, presentation. This will help you and you will get more knowledge. Uh, so let's have a look about the types of plagiarism. And there are different types of plagiarism and all are serious violations of academic honesty. For example, direct plagiarism. This is first kind of plagiarism. Uh, like direct plagiarism means um, is that word for word transcription of a section of someone else's work without attribution and without quotation marks. The Deliberate plagiarism of someone else's work is unethical, academically dishonest, and grounds for disciplinary actions, including exclusions. And um, self-plagiarism, self-plagiarism uh, occurs when a student submits his or her own previous work or mixes part of previous works without permissions uh, from all uh, professors uh, who they are involved in this kind of uh, assignments. For example, it would be unacceptable to incorporate part of the term paper you wrote in high school uh, into a paper assignment in a college course. Self-plagiarism also applies to submitting the same piece of work for assignments in different classes without previous permissions from both professors. You, you're gonna present the same work in the different uh, uh, classes that is also committing the plagiarism. The third one is mosaic plagiarism. Mosaic plagiarism occurs when a student borrows phrases from a, a source without using quotation marks or finds synonyms, I mean like synonyms for the author's language while keeping to the same general structure and meaning of the original sometimes called patch writing and, and this kind of paragraphing or whether intentional or not is ac academically dishonest and punishable. Even if you footnote your sources, even you are mentioning the, your sources, uh, that is still dishonest and punishable. So you need to be careful with the, this kind of plagiarism as well. The last one is accidental plagiarism. Accidental uh, plagiar uh, plagiarism occurs when a person neglects to cite their sources or misquotes their sources or unintentionally paraphrases a source by using similar words, uh, groups of words uh, or sentences, structures without attribution. And uh, students must learn how to cite their sources and to take careful and accurate notes when doing research. The reason behind lack of intent does, uh, I mean, it does not absolve the students of responsibility for plagiarism. Uh, this kind of cases or cases of accidental plagiarism are taken as seriously as any other plagiarism and are subject to the same range of consequences as other types of plagiarism. So you need to understand that what kind of plagiarism that is forced, the direct plagiarism, self-plagiarism, mosaic plagiarism, or accidental plagiarism, any kind of uh, plagiarism, you uh, cannot avoid 
uh, the dishonesty or punishment, the reason sometimes you can say that I have no idea this work belongs to someone else because um, I believe uh, this doesn't belong to anyone else, but that is that kind of accidental uh, plagiarism, even then that is punishable. So you need to be very, very careful at the time of research or uh, you know, uh, solving the assignments from the student sections. A million dollar question uh, that uh, how to detect plagiarism and what uh, I mean like plagiarism tools uh, do I mean how they can detect it and what kind of uh, methods or what kind of uh, algorithm being used over there. Uh, normally, uh, our plagiarism checker uses advanced databases software to scan for matches between your text and existing text. They're used by universities to scan students' assignments and there are also commercial plagiarism checkers uh, you can use to check your work before submitting. Uh, what kind of softwares uh, do we have it which can detect the tools uh, grammarly? Though there are I mean, like plenty of uh, softwares available uh, online and you can go ahead with them. I mean, some of them, uh, they're offering their basic version as a free version, but their advanced version with the more uh, flexible tools and advanced options, you have to go and buy all these options, I mean, like uh, uh, softwares. The first one we uh, choose that is Grammarly. The second one, uh, Pro Writing Aid. And the third one is Dupli Checker. And the last but not least, that is uh, Paper Writer. Let us discuss about one by one that how these uh, softwares are important and how they can work behind uh, behind the scene. Like once you are going to be use any of that software, how that can help you to avoid the plagiarism. Grammarly in San Francisco provides its grammar improvement and AI-driven writing assistance platform. And that is really important that nowadays from last, I um, mean, like I believe six months, AI is getting, uh, I mean, like, really uh, getting inside the I mean like in the market now artificial intelligence tools and gpt especially once they that been introduced it is writing for you the essay applications even uh, whatever you want they can write for you uh, but uh, i believe in coming days uh, the chat gpt is getting more popular but you need to understand that once you are uh, using the chat GPT, that can also detect the information from uh, definitely from the internet. And you need to avoid the plagiarism as well, because uh, there are some tools available if you're sending some kind of assignments or research to some specific department, and they can check whether it's been written by the chat GPT or you have written by yourself. In the following slides, uh, I do have some kind of um, uh, like tips for you, how you can avoid chat GPT plagiarism. So uh, we have discussed about um, like uh, Grammarly uh, and uh, you, you can say that uh, it's available on uh, free or paid premium and business plans. There are three different plans available for Grammarly. If you're gonna have it with the basic one, uh, this can give you the grammar, uh, I mean like improvement options over there. And uh, in the advanced and uh, business version, you can have more tools and advanced options available. And the second one is uh, uh, Paper Rater. Paper Rater or paperrater.com is a proofreading and grammar checking writing tool available free online or via professional editions. The same, similarly, the basic version is uh, free, but if you want to use the advanced version, you have to pay for that one. It was acquired and is now supported by Barnes and Noble Education, BNED, since August 2018. This is another good tool for your, uh, for your, uh, like, uh, you know, for, uh, for kind of a plagiarism checking or improving um, the, in like the English language. Um, you, you can improve using this uh, a tool. All these tools can be used for to improve your English language and plagiarism check as well. The next one is uh, Pro Writing Aid. Uh, Pro Writing Aid is a smart writing assistant providing personalized advice 
on writing and plagiarism checks. From the company of the same name is Wheatley as well available. It can help you to write uh, different kind of uh, paragraphs and whatever you want. They can give you the advice as well as well as they can check the plagiarism. The last one is uh, Dupli Checker. Dupli Checker or just duplichecker.com is a free plagiarism checker and it is supported by uh, the sites ads as well and SEO checks. Uh, for example, keyword density, for example, tool suits, and all these kind of information you can do ahead with this one. So I would suggest you have to go and check all these uh, different softwares. First, you have to go and install their basic versions. And whatever the software you feel that is much more suitable for you, you can go ahead to purchase it. And I believe uh, they're not offering too high prices so you anyone can afford it. Uh, Grammarly, I believe for the students, it was, I think, $5 or something like that related to monthly basis. Or, uh, and similarly, rest of the software, they are not very expensive. So you can try it, their advanced version as well. Safe Assign, uh, this is our main uh, tool which we're gonna discuss about uh, in the Blackboard Ultra that is free available for all of you. No need to go and uh, buy the advanced version for any kind of other softwares. If you are I mean, like Jazan University faculty and you're using Blackboard and you do have a uh, user ID and password for the Jazan University, you can use Safe Assign free of cost. Safe Assign is a plagiarism prevention tool that detects unoriginal content in students' papers by identifying areas overlap between submitted assignments and existing works. I would like to uh, clear over here that this is basically designed for the assignments uh, for the students specifically, but the teachers can use with the research as well because this doesn't it, it work for the similarly for the assignments and for the research as well. Anyway, I do have Blackboard uh, now part of anthology uh, as we have discussed already in last sessions that now is a part of anthology. This is the new company and they, they take over it and they are well renowned in the education sector and Blackboard Safe Assign. This is a, as I discussed that a plagiarism prevention tool and it empowers student success with a powerful and effective tool for promoting academic integrity and evaluating originality. So now let's have a live demo of Blackboard Safe Assign that how does it work? I uh, do have prepared one video for you guys. Um, uh, to preventing any kind of dis distraction during the live session. Sometimes it happens that you are applying some live tools, but it didn't work, some kind of network issues or something like that. So I have recorded this video. I'm gonna uh, share with you and I'm gonna uh, I mean, like discuss each and every part by myself, but I'm gonna take a start with this uh, I mean, like short video, but you have to be in touch with me. So we, we can have, we can raise some kind of questions in the end of the video. Hey everyone, this video is gonna walk you through using SafeAssign and what it looks like on the other end once students submit a SafeAssign assignment. It's pretty simple. Uh, I would like to add one comment over here that you, uh, I mean like interface of the Blackboard Ultra and the Blackboard Original is similar. Once you log in, you can find out your um, like uh, desktop over there. You do have your um, courses. You just need to log in and select your course where you want to uh, submit the assign assignment for the students and you can follow all the instructions one by one. So I'm gonna come into my Blackboard class and I'm gonna go into the folder where I have it. And I've already created an assignment and I've already done one submission, but I'm going to show you how a student would submit as well. All right, so I created this assignment. So I went up to a 
you can find out over here this mean already uh, created one assignment if you want to create a new assignment you simply click on assignments and you can go ahead with assignment and follow all the steps you already know because all the faculty is using uh, this system from last uh, three to four years so uh, no need to go in detail that how you can create assignments but once you are creating the assignments at that time we have discussed that how you can use a, a safe assign option for uh, the plagiarism checking uh, for your students. Assessments and I selected assignment. And so I'll just show you the options I selected in order to turn on the safe assign option. So I gave the assignment a title. You can put directions. You can find out at the time of uh, preparing the assignment or you have done me like you already uh, created the assignment and we are going to make the added mean once you click on the added button you can have all the tools in front of you and by putting their name uh, name uh, for the assignment and description and instruction you can follow step by step here or anything that you want to um for the students to access you can also put files here like if you had a rubric you want to attach or anything else you can pop that in here as well i did not put a due date on this one because i didn't want it to populate to the calendar I had to add um, a point value because it's asterisk. You say you needed to have that in order to submit later. I did multiple attempts just in case um, a student maybe accidentally uploaded one and then wanted to change it and then upload again. So instead of having to deal with backend stuff there, I always use multiple attempts, but you can do a single attempt if you want. And then down here is what we're looking at. So this so look at this one once you are preparing all the options in the properties of the assignment uh, once you have done by selecting number of attempts you can have multiple attempts you can have single attempt or two attempts whatever the attempts you want to um, select you can go ahead with this one the next option is score attempts using last uh, graded attempt if you want to have the grading for this one you can select it the most important part and the option for next is plagiarism tool that is check submissions for plagiarism using safe assign you need to uh, click on this checkbox you need to enable this checkbox and the second option that is available on the bottom you can see allow students to view a uh, safe assign originality report for their attempts. You have to check this one at least once they submitted, they can have the report that uh, their, uh, their assignment is original or it is plagiarized uh, or they have copied from some other information. The last one is exclude submissions from the institutional and global references databases that is detail also available. First, you have to look uh, first two options that how they were plagiarism tools. So if you want safe assign to be turned on, you want to check this box. And if you want the students to be able to see their safe assign originality report when they're done so that they can look at what they have been plagiarizing or maybe not plagiarizing if they've done a good job, um, it might be nice for them to see that and see what you see. Um, I did not check the box here for exclude submissions from the institutional and global references database. What the global um, database is, is basically Blackboard at any institution, a paper that's submitted by a student. Uh, they keep that in their database. And so this way it prevents sharing of papers from class to class or institution to institution. You can find our global references database. This is basically a global references database is a separate database where students voluntarily donate copies of their papers to help promote originality. So uh, this database is separated from each institution's internal database where all papers are stored by each corresponding institutions. So if you want to select this one, it means, um, I mean, like students can have the options. I mean, like you are going to exclude means uh, that all the assignments mean uh, uploaded in this database that can be excluded from the plagiarism. So normally it is, uh, I mean, like normally we do not check this box and they also have the um, institutional document archive so it contains all papers submitted to save assign by users at North Allegheny. I made the assignment available so students can access it and then I selected submit. So once you're done you just simply click on submit. All right now to turn in what a student would do 
just like any so now we are in the student uh, preview you can see that uh, students can see all their content which you already been our teacher already been enabled to share with the students and here they can find their assignment as well anything else they would access the assignment and just like any other submission they're going to browse their local files and they're going to go find it. So whether they're on an iPad or their laptop, they still have to browse their local files. Here's the thing. SafeAssign only accepts certain file types. So if you had them write it in a Google Drive or a Google Doc, they need to download it as a PDF. And so once they download it as a PDF, um, if they're on their iPad, they can put it in their files app and then they can find it via the files app. If they're on their laptop, they can put it um, in their downloads or on their desktop or a folder they'll be able to find it so i just want to point out this piece again the students can volunteer to submit their papers to that global reference database that we discussed earlier so that's up to you if you want to make them do this but this is a voluntary basis by students when they submit so i'm going to actually uh, so um, we already discussed about the go uh, global references databases so right now we are in the student preview uh, you can teach the students that if they are willing to submit uh, their papers to the global reference databases, they can check over here. It's up to them. If they want to check this one, want to send their uh, work for the global reference databases, they can check this one. Otherwise, uh, they can go ahead without this one. Um, find my file here. I'm going to attach it and I'm going to click submit. And so it will um, report in progress. So as a student, I can wait for this to um, upload and get that report. If I don't wanna wait as a student, that's okay. I'm gonna show you from the teacher end what that looks like. All right, so everybody has submitted. I've had two assignments submitted. I showed you one and I have another one previously submitted. So I'm gonna go into my grade center. You simply turn back to the uh, teacher's preview. And you, if you want to check the assignments, graduate, you simply uh, go ahead into in, into your grade center and then you can move on to the assignments and then you can check that how it is working and i'm going to scroll over to my narrative writing assignment and as you can see i have submitted something so i can click the job for example we do have uh, a couple of assignments available in our uh, grade center so let's have a look at how you can go ahead and attempt with this one. Down next to it and select attempt or great attempt. And as you can see, it shows me that I have, I'm viewing one of two gradable items. So like I said before, I've had two submissions. So it shows me the paper here. And right here is the safe assign. I have a 0% overall match, which that's you can find out on the right side that there is only I mean, like safe assign uh, boxes available on the bottom and it is showing there is 0%. It means there is no uh, plagiarism detected over there and this all work being uh, done as a original work. That's good. The closer to zero you get, the better. So I hit that drop down next to safe assign and I'm able to view this originality report. So even though it says 0%, you may want to still view it and it brings open a new screen. And so a short summary here, I can click that and it tells me this is low risk that they may, this paper may contain a few common words or phrases, but overall um, they're not seeing a match anywhere. So that is good news for this student. So now I'm gonna go to the next student. So here is a, uh, I mean like second uh, uh, students, which uh, we're going to check about their assignments and you can find your safely, I mean like safe assigned to have 86% overall matches. And now you can see that what kind of results and uh, summary you can have in your uh, grade center, which can tell you that what kind of plagiarism and uh, where do uh, that plagiarism or data being copied from the internet and which sites even. As you can see right off the bat, I see this student has an 86% overall match. That is bad. The closer you get to 100, that is not good. You know that they have sampled from around the internet. So if I click that drop down next to Safe Assign again, I get this little drop down area and I can view the originality report. And so right away, I can get a report summary. 
that it tells me this is a very high risk paper. Um, yes, 86% match within the paper. So it looks like that they have um, paraphrased and quoted in excess and need to be reviewed for plagiarism. So what's really nice about this uh, report is that it tells me from the global database, it shows me that it has sampled two papers and a, two student papers. So that's why sometimes that global database is nice. And then from the internet, what's really nice here is that it'll tell me the website that it got it from. And it's even color coded over here. So I can see like number one is right here. So for example, this number seven, let's say this now novel, I know that that is that one right there. And I can actually open the source where it came from and it takes me right to the website where it came from. So that's just a really nice feature. So this safe assign give you a very pretty, like a very detailed answer and a report for plagiarism. And even you can open the source where this data has been copied from the internet. So you can easily track down all the information that on which location and which website being used to copy this data. And pretty easy. You're able to access where exactly they get it, they got it from on the internet. Uh, with the global database, yes, we know it's from a student paper, but it doesn't give me an option to um, pull up which student. So safe assign is a nice feature. Um, of course, if you're having people cite sources, it will pull those sources up, but you'll know that those are cited sources and they're using them correctly rather than plagiarizing and trying to pass them off as their own. I hope this helps you as you're grading some writing assignments and some other things that where students are researching and pulling in from the internet. I hope uh, this is uh, really easy to understand for all of you that how you can use the safe assign uh, before moving ahead on next slide that I have a question for all you guys. If you are uh, connected with me, how many uh, plagiarism types we do have it? Do anyone have an idea? Can you answer me in one minute in the text box, in the chat box? I'm waiting for your answer, please. We, we have one minute to answer for this one that uh, how many types of plagiarism do we have to understand? What type of plagiarism we can encounter in our research? Or can you please write it down the name for that one? Okay, self-plagiarism, I write accidental. There's two more. Direct plagiarism, one more. Okay, tell me, uh, what does it mean by accidental plagiarism? Can someone explain in one sentence? What is accidental plagiarism? Just explain in single sentence. Okay. Is it punishable or no? Because you didn't do it intentionally. You're responsible for that one or no? Okay, it is not deliberately. Uh, my question is, I uh, mean, for example, you have done uh, unintentionally. Uh, is it punishable or no? You're responsible for that one? Yes, that's good. That that answer is correct. That even then it's accidental and it's unintentionally you have done over there, but even then you're responsible for all of your act inside research. 
So this is your responsibility that you have to check. This is even accidentally you are going to do something that is unethical academically and punishable and you, you need to exclude at the end. And somehow uh, there are more punishments available for this one. They can make you blacklisted or something. For example, you have done some kind of research, you're sending in the journal and you committed with the I mean like uh, any kind of plagiarism, they can uh, blacklisted you. So you need to be careful with all kind of actions you've not done over there. So let's move ahead. A, a, a very good question over here, how to avoid plagiarism detection. There's what kind of options and what kind of uh, we do have uh, mean like tips and tricks to avoid the students. You can, um, how you can teach your students that they can avoid plagiarism detection over there. Uh, sometimes uh, students put a lot of creativity into cheating on a paper. <laughs> Very interesting. By exposing students who choose to cheer, uh, educators can help them improve and guide their potential in the right direction. Most often learners who are not willing to work on an original paper and put their own thoughts into words turn to text modification. Uh, modern instructors have to look out for many types of uh, cheating and be able to detect different types of plagiarism in student work. Let, let's take uh, in like a text modifications. Uh, for example, while they might seem different text modifications are still a form of plagiarism, just in September 29, that is, I mean, like detected 7% of the text modifications. So you can be committed by a text modification that is also a punishable, I mean, um, unethical way. So you need to be careful over there because the students are putting too much their energies to cheat the uh, faculty or the, I mean, like supervisor or the teacher. So you, you need to be very smart to detect that what they are going to be doing. So what is a digital modification? Digital text modification is a, a collective notion for how students plagiarize someone else's work with the help of technology. Like nowadays, I have just discussed about the AI uh, GPT that you are, in, you are going to do some cheat. You don't need to write a complete essay. You just need to ask the chat GPT and he, he or she can write for you in a second for all the things. So you need to understand that how they're using um, the plagiarism you can avoid by using the technology. So students turning to digital text modification believe uh, that their professors don't know all the technological tricks of altering text and will thus not be able to identify the culprits. However, an advanced plagiarism checker solutions can recognize numerous types of students cheating, even digital text modification. So in future, I believe digital text modification would be the biggest issue for all the faculty and teachers that how you can have understanding, well, the understanding to that the student is cheating or uh, that work just belongs to him. Digital text modification include different methods. Let's take, I mean, like a closer look at them, that what kind of digital uh, text modifications can be done over there. There, there is, I uh, mean, like option available that how uh, can I prevent plagiarism? Uh, the first way you need to understand that uh, uh, written resources have become more easily available on the internet and students may not have a clear understanding of what uh, constitutes plagiarism is each of their courses. Uh, before moving ahead about discussing digital test modification types that uh, first there is a responsibility for the teachers to um, educate their students that what is plagiarism and how you can avoid uh, by using the assignments or uh, copying the data from the internet and what kind of, uh, I mean, like uh, the problems can be done for them. So first making and um, uh, making the understanding and developing the understanding about the plagiarism for the students, this is a responsibility for the teacher. So clearly define plagiarism for the students that what 
is plagiarism and how they can avoid that one committing plagiarism for example they are going to permit and what kind of I mean like we have already discussed about uh that direct plagiarism and um, uh you're gonna uh, do it the mosaic plagiarism and self-plagiarism so you need to uh develop the understanding for the students as well that they need to know before going to solve the assignments by using the technology and you can provide examples for proper citations that for example you want to use someone else's work that what is the ethical way to cite their work and you, you you need to give them some kind of examples a proper citation example that how they can use it and they can uh, create original assignments by using all these tips and tricks they can create the original assignments So uh, common ways uh, students avoid plagiarism, uh, they can use the making of references. So this is uh, basically extension of digital text modification. We have just discussed in last slide that uh, what kind of ways students can avoid um, plagiarism detection. The first one, making of references. Uh, the second one, insert void text. And for last one, format modification. Uh, some students add non-existing on unrelated references to their paper instead of taking the time to search for the needed one. For example, a student writes an essay on Romeo and Juliet, and instead of quoting real citation, uh, the work, they simply uh, go ahead with the, I mean, like, um, you can say, fake references. So this can uh, be a big problem for, for, for the teacher and for the student as well. Uh, or uh, state real references with the fake page numbers. A reference given by the student could be related to the topic, but not state or support the idea the student connects with the I mean, like references. So making up references, you need to make uh, them understand the students that they have to put all the references in a sequence and uh, they must be connected from the information and they must be cited over there. For example, uh, they, uh, they're writing some kind of essay over there but they are putting the uh, fake references. It doesn't work for the student as well. The next one is inserting white text. Uh, that is sometimes student inserts unique white color text to mask plagiarism. This is another kind of uh, unique technique uh, which can help them to avoid the plagiarism. They add different characters and spaces in white so that the teacher does not see them. So uh, a primitive plagiarism checkers will not be able to find uh, them either. So sometimes this can happen. So you need to be very careful. Uh, format modification, students who get creative in the wrong way, sometimes present paper in the form of an image so that an instructor cannot run it to anti-plagiarism software. Students are very tricky. So teachers need to be more tricky with them. And instructions, uh, a teacher can still read the paper and grade it, but they are unable to check it with any software. This is the reason why instructor or teacher specify what paper format they require. So format modification is, I mean, like the a student can be very smart over here. Instead of sending you the text format or PDF format, they can send you the picture format. So that is not able to uh, check by any kind of uh, plagiarism tool. So before sending them the assignment, you have to create some kind of uh, instructions that, okay, you have to go with this, 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 this file extension. For example, the bike support, you can use it, PDF files or HTML uh, pages you can send for the as assignment, but don't send as a picture or something like that. So you can avoid uh, this kind of tricks from the students. Tools to avoid plagiarism. There are uh, some kind of tools available. Uh, right now we are discussing about that, how you can check the plagiarism, but definitely there are ways that even you have taken some work from the research, from the internet, and you want to modify what kind of tools can give you an idea that how you can rephrase them in your in your context and the actual meaning doesn't change over there. So any uh, a paraphrasing tool is a typical way to avoid plagiarism. It is also called an article rewriter and works by taking the content from the source and changing the word and phrases. 
The content produced still mean like uh, the retains the idea and meaning of the source content. So there are multiple uh, online softwares available. You can go ahead with them with the basic uh, version that is free. But if you need a more advanced version with more advanced tool, you need to buy, buy them. And uh, what two uh, mean like tools we have chosen over here, that is one is Quillboard, one of the best um, rephrasing software which can help you to rewrite your essay and it can give you more option than any anyone else. And the second one is Turnitin. This is also a good one. This can help you not only the rewrite, but that can also check the plagiarism. But turn it in normally uh, used by the organization. It's not available for the individual ones, but Quillboard is available for the individual one. If you want to buy it or you want first, you have to, uh, I mean, like this is my suggestion. First, you have to go and create your user ID and password on Quillboard and use the basic version. This can help you a lot. And on later stages, for example, you think that uh, I need uh, the advanced version, you can go ahead and buy that one. That is also not very expensive, very uh, cheap, and uh, it's affordable prices available. So first, uh, how can I, uh, I mean like, Avoid the plagiarism, clearly define plagiarism, committing plagiarism, provide example of citations, create original assignments. I already discussed, um, I mean, like uh, in a last uh, slide, but we gonna have a little more, uh, I mean, like uh, lightning up on all these topics. So, uh, because writing tasks often feel, uh, I mean, the don't think the students, there is a temptation of the plagiarizing uh, written work, and written resources have become more easily available on the internet and students may not have a clear understanding of what type of plagiarism in each of their courses. So first clearly uh, define the plagiarism. Uh, this should be done from the teacher's side that at the beginning of the semester in the syllabus and verbally give students a clear definition of what uh, mean by the plagiarism and what is considered appropriate collaboration. And here you need to note that um, these definitions may differ from the faculty member to member, but uh, the basic idea would remain the same. Uh, you can go ahead and tell them uh, that especially important to make our expectations clear to students in each course uh, we teach. So at the time of start of the semester, you need to be very clear uh, define a definition about the plagiarism once you are done all these verbally and in the syllabus. So students do have an idea that what kind of plagiarism can be done inside the ass assignments and how they can avoid over there. The second one is committing plagiarism. Your good ideas become better when you test them against other idea. Uh, for this course, I feel free to discuss your ideas about the assignments with other students. However, using someone else's words, ideas, and concepts without citing your source is plagiarism. So is presenting part or all of another student's work as you want, uh, so this is in the world of writing, especially academic writing. This is a serious crime and is treated as such as a punishment. Anyone who uh, commits plagiarism may receive a failing grade for the entire course and be referred to the appropriate uh, dean's office for further disciplinary action. So you can tell your students that if you, this is, this is the meaning and definition of the plagiarism, but even then, if you're going to commit that one because the punishment are an unethical, appropriate way, uh, need to be punishable, you need to tell them that, for example, you're going to do it. So at that time, you can get fail uh, and you, you will not get the gradings for all the semester for this subject, or you can send them in the Dean's office for more disciplinary action. You can send it out from the classroom or something like that. So teacher need to uh, develop the understanding for plagiarism. For example, if someone is going to commit, they can face the difficulty and problems uh, inside the classrooms and inside the university or college as well. 
you can provide examples for citations, uh, how you can uh, do it, uh, give students examples of how and when they should credit the work of others in their writing. This way, they will have uh, concrete cases to which they can refer when question arises. So by giving them examples of citations, so if they've been asked the question that why you use this um, uh, data from others, they can have the solid and concrete proofs and they can discuss in detail for that one. The last one is uh, create original assignments. How you can create the original assignments? Uh, this is again the tricky for the teacher. And the more unusual an uh, assignment, for example, taking a different perspective on a problem, question, or reading, uh, the less likely students will be able to find something from the internet or their peers. So to submit as their own work, in addition, an assignment that has multiple parts may reduce the probability of plagiarism. So teacher can uh, be tricky with assignments instead giving them the um, neutral uh, kind of assignments or the common um, problems assignments. They can choose the unique problems uh, that, that can be unusual and uh, might possible they would not be able to find out the data on the internet. So at that time, they can make some discussion between the peers, but they cannot get the idea. They have to do it by their own, uh, by their own idea. So this is one way. Another way that instead giving one assignment, you can uh, divide it into parts. So by putting in the parts the assignments that can also be avoided by the plagiarism from the student side. So that's all from the session. I hope you got an idea that uh, how, I mean, what is plagiarism? Uh, we try to uh, make this presentation in the sequence. First, I have discussed about the plagiarism. Then we discussed that uh, types of plagiarism. Then we moved on uh, the practical demo over there that what is a safe assign, how we can use it, and what kind of other softwares which are available for you uh, uh to to avoid the plagiarism at the end we have discussed that uh, what kind of tricks being used to avoid the plagiarism and how you can educate the students over there uh that's all from the session if you have any question you can ask me thanks for your time and uh, we do have a question you're right I'm here to answer you if you have any questions.